AU Tiger 93X bringing you a gameplay on the map Cargo by Mr. Massive. I will probably only bring you a gameplay by Mr. Massive on Cargo because I can do no good at all on this map. I always tend to run a negative KD. Uh, I just, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the different little areas and everything else. I end up getting picked off by a sniper. Just can't play the map. I doubt I've won very many matches on this map. But Mr. Massive makes it look easy. Especially here in the beginning. Using the PDW. With a laser sight. He is raping these guys. Today is Sunday. And like Mr. DB1 told me one time. He said we're going to do Life Story Sunday. So today... If Mr. Massive does not mind over his gameplay, I'm going to bring you another life story interesting from my childhood. DV1 says I was very mischievous when I was a kid. That may be true. I did a few things when I was a child that I'm not so proud of, but it does bring memories and it does bring, bring, brings us laughs. My dad doesn't laugh too much about this next story, but it is kind of funny. So, without further ado, and like I say, Mr. Massive, uh, your gameplay is awesome, and we'll have us uh, an another gameplay pretty soon from Mr. Massive. I think he's got a few more that are pretty darn good. I hear the little one crying in the background. If you can hear her, please excuse her. She's been a brat this weekend. On to my story. When I was ki a kid, probably about eight, nine years old, my family was lucky enough to own a beach house uh, down in a very nice area. Um, beautiful, beautiful area, beautiful, beautiful house. Um, we spent every summer there. My dad finally decided to get us a boat, and we got us a one of the V-hole uh, split window uh, walk-through bows uh, ski boat type of thing where we could ski, ride around, have a good time. My dad was very proud of this boat. I was very proud of the boat. I spent hours in that boat acting like I was driving it. Uh, it would be tied up down at the dock at the end of our pier and I would spend hours acting like I was driving that boat. One day I was on the pier and I decided I'd go play in the boat, act like I was driving it. And I looked in the boat and lo and behold, my dad had left the keys. I saw the little dingy thing, the little booby thing hanging from the keychain. And I said, bullseye, look at this. So I got in the boat. My dad and my mom were up. Our, our house was quite far away from the pier. They up, it was up a big hill. So they were quite far away making lunch or something or another. And I'm down there. I get in the boat and I decide that It'd be a good idea to crank the boat up. Now, my dad had let me dri drove the, drive the boat some, sitting on his lap. He taught me how to do the throttle, steer the boat. Um, that's about all he taught me. And he would let me sit on his lap sometimes and drive the boat. Anyway, I thought it'd be neat to crank the boat up. So I did. I turned the key, and it was a very good boat, uh, if I remember correctly. That thing would turn and crank up with a with a uh, just a turn of the key. I, I have a boat now, the uh, same type of boat, a uh, little ski boat, and it's not so easy to start. It's got an outboard mercury on it, and it's cold natured and very hard to start. But back to the story. Anyway, the boat cranked up, and I sat there playing with it and revving it up. So I turned it off, and I looked up towards the house, nobody was coming. My next step, I, I decided I wanted to back the boat out. Just back it out, and then I'd put it back in there, and I'd tie it back up. No big deal. Crank the boat back up again. Untied it from the bow. And I backed it out. And just as I backed it out, I drove the boat back in. No big deal. And I sat there and played with it some more. Looked up towards the house. Mom or my dad, they weren't looking down there, so... I decided that I was going to back the boat out and go around in a circle out in the bay. So I untied it again, cranked it up, backed the boat out, and I drove around in a big circle by the pier. 
put the boat back in this little stall and tied it back up and turned the motor off. Very proud of what I had done. I looked up towards the, the house and once again my mom and dad were must be up there making lunch. Maybe drinking a martini or something like that. I'm not sure. So I decided I'm gonna take it for a little spin. Just 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 a little ways down the down the down the water line there, past the piers, and just go down there and I'd turn around and I'd come back. No big deal. Untied the boat, cranked it up, backed it out, rode on down. Probably about four or five piers, and I turned around and I came back towards our pier. Made sure I looked up towards the house to make sure my mom and dad were not looking down at the pier. And they weren't. So I decided I'd go for another little tour. And I went ahead and started heading down close to the coast, right on the edge of the piers. And I went ahead and got it going a little faster, and a little faster, and a little faster. And before I knew it, I had it pretty much full throttle. I'm not sure what size motor it was, but it was a fast little boat. I think probably 45 or 50 miles an hour. So here I am, eight years old, uh, cruising at top speed, not far from the edge of the piers. Now I told you before, my dad taught me how to steer the boat, crank the boat, uh, give the boat throttle. But never did he tell me what the buoys out in the water meant, what the green signs, the red signs. Uh, never told me what those meant. So I didn't know what they meant. Didn't care at the time. I was having a blast. So I'm running full speed. Passed by a few bu buoys. And immediately, I ran the boat up on a sandbar that probably was less than a foot deep. At full speed, mind you. The, the force of, the, of, the, of hitting that sandbar threw me up against the steering wheel and the windshield. The motor in the back, it broke the transom on the boat, completely broke the transom. The, the bottom of the, of the propeller and the, the foot of the boat, of the motor, uh, you know, caught that sand and broke the transom in the boat. The motor fell over into the water, uh, still attached by the cables. So I'm a little bit bruised, sitting up on this sandbar out in the middle of the bay, crying. I didn't know what to do. Uh, so I'm sitting there for about 30 minutes, and an old man that lived close to us, he came by in his boat, looked at me sitting there crying in the boat, and he's like, well, what happened? You know, where, where's your daddy? And I, I, don't, I don't know where my daddy is. And he, I guess he had thought my dad had gotten off the boat and walked to shore and gone to get help. But I think he finally realized my dad wasn't anywhere around the boat and that I had done it. So he got out of his boat, walked over to, my, to mine. Uh, he couldn't get too close with his boat because it was so shallow. He was able to get the motor back over into the boat, still attached by cables. Anyway, pulled the boat off the sandbar and towed it back towards my house. Oh, I was crying. And you know, by that time, my parents had looked down there and they had realized that the boat was gone. They were both on the end of the pier, my dad with binoculars. And I could see him off in the distance as we pulled the boat towards him. I didn't think my dad had that long arms, but when we were within 10 feet of that pier, he reached down and grabbed me by my shoulder blade, pulled me up on that pier, and mind you, this is back in the day when spanking was legal. And spanking was necessary. And we had a room in our house called the Deerhead Room. Never forget it. My dad took me into that room and he commenced to wear me out. Probably one of the worst whippings I had ever gotten in my entire life. I don't know what happened after that. I stayed in my room the rest of the day. I slept most of the day, very embarrassed to come out. But I know I looked out the window and I saw a man with a trailer taking the boat away. We never had that boat again. I don't know what happened to that boat. We never had another boat again. But I'll always remember that story. Coming to the end of this gameplay, Mr. Massive, you did a great job. We'll bring you another one pretty soon. This is the end. And this is AU Tiger 93X. Thanks for watching. 
Tune in for more and subscribe if you are new. Thank you.